Hi and welcome to the next video in my series on HTML and CSS for beginners. My name is Kevin and today we're looking at styling links. So styling links gets its own video because it's a bit of a weird thing and I have to introduce something called pseudo classes. Pseudo classes are kind of weird uh, but they're not that complicated. Uh, we can delete this. This is from our last video and we're not using it anymore. Uh, now if we look at this one, what do we have? Uh, I've just taken a very similar document to what we had in the last one, but I've replaced our little spans with some links in here, and I want to make these links look a lot nicer. So uh, if you remember, or let's just look at one thing really fast. Um, I have my paragraph here, and on my paragraph, I'm going to change the color of it again. Let's just do color red. So it really stands out, the big difference that I'm making to it. And all my text becomes red, but my links don't. My links stay blue, and it's a really ugly blue, the default, and has that underline on there that isn't the nicest. The main reason for that, and let's just get rid of a few of these things here that I don't really want either. Uh, and that last one we can keep. All of my text changed to red, but my um, my fonts didn't change, my, my links didn't change to red. And well, what, that's kind of weird because my links are in my paragraph and I told you guys that when you style something that, you know, that style cascades down. So when I changed this something in my body that would cascade down into the paragraphs and affect the paragraphs. So how come when I change something on my paragraph, it doesn't cascade down and take over in the links? And the reason for that is um, the cascade works as long as that thing doesn't have a style on it. So, uh, for example, when I change my body right now, if I come up to my body and I change this color to green and I can't spell, but if I change that over to green and I save, this doesn't become green. So th that style is cascading throughout, but because my paragraphs have a specific color on them, this color wins. And while I've never told my links that they need to be blue, the browser is telling them that they need to be blue. It's a default style. Just like my paragraphs right now, um, or not right now, but before the last video, my paragraphs, there was space between them, even though I never told them to have space. There's a whole bunch of defaults that our systems have, or the browsers have, and one of them is that links have to be blue. And the only way we can overcome that is if we use the A tag. So I'm going to select my A and let's do color. Uh, let's just do a yellow so we see it change. And now I see my links change and the underline of course changing with it. So uh, that doesn't look fantastic but at least it worked. Uh, let's make them black maybe that might be nicer and this red. Let's try fire brick just so it doesn't look too ugly. Uh, that looks a little bit nicer. So that looks okay. I want my links to stand out and they're jumping out and I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, but what if I want a hover effect? A lot of places when you, you put the mouse on top you see the, the link change. And this is where we have to get into something called pseudo classes. Don't want to make it too complicated but um, a pseudo class it's a selector that we can do that it's selecting the element in different states of being if that makes sense. So uh, just let's actually look at it for a second. Uh, so I'm going to do A, I'm going to put a colon, and I'm going to write hover. And let's do a hover um, color yellow. And again, just so we can really see it. Refresh. And now when I hover over, so I bring my mouse on top, it's changing over to that yellow. Uh, so this is the pseudo class of A. So it's I have my regular link, and then... There's this special state of being for my link when my mouse goes on top. It's a the hover state. So I'm selecting this class that only exists when I'm hovering my mouse on top of it. So that, that state of the link can come and go. That's why it's a pseudo class and the color can change to yellow and you don't only have to change the color. I could even say font, font size uh 50 pixels and i could say font family saw serif let's save that and refresh and please never do this on your site it's 
for just to show you that it works, but that is the worst user experience in the world. So don't do that. But just to show you, you can change different properties uh, for the hover effect. So yeah, we don't want to be doing things like that, but I wanted to show you that you can. Uh, now, there's not only the hover state, there's actually four different states. Um, there's the normal link state. So this is just the default link. So in it's not gonna count for the hover or anything else, only when it's a normal link. Uh, that hasn't been touched or hovered or anything, I have my A link. So my normal sort of default linky style thing. Um, my hover is when I hover over it, how it's going to change. Another one I have is a visited. And you've all seen visited link styles before, especially when you're on Google. Let's go over to Google and just put in CSS font family to see I've probably clicked on things in here before. Um, you can see a few of these are in purple. Maybe you can see it. Um, so Google does this where to let you know what, you know, that you've been clicking on things and what have you visited and what haven't you visited. You know because it's purple if you've seen it and it's not purple if you haven't visited. So let's try this out and close that too. Uh, let's give this a color of uh, pink. I'm going to make my links that I visited pink. So when I refresh this, you'll notice they've all changed to pink. And what happened there? Well, um, because I just used dummy uh, links and I've been, oh yeah, I guess I accidentally clicked on one before, um, it said I've already visited this page in the past, so all of my links changed. So just to show you, uh, if I put in a link I haven't visited, uh, whoops, that was right. If I save that, uh, this will go back to black. So the hover is still there. Um, but this is when uh, a link I haven't been to, and this is a link I have been to. So that's a link I have visited. And there's one last one. And the last one is a active. And we'll use another different color. I have yellow, I have pink, I have black. Uh, let's put in blue. We'll go back to the default link blue color. The way the active works is uh, I have my regular link, I have my hover, I have my visited, so links that I've already been to, and the last thing I have is my active, and the active is while I'm clicking down on the link. So I'm going to come off of that. So when I click down it's changing, and then when you let go of the mouse it goes away. Active states Let's be honest, most people click and it's finished. That's it. You know, click, click, click. Um, so you can see it's flashing there because I have a really big difference between it. Are you usually going to have a, a, an active? Have you ever noticed that really? My guess is no. You can throw one in there if you want, though. I'm showing all four of them to you. So something that's really important, guys, they have to be in this order. And one of the reasons they have to be in this order is because the CSS is reading it in this order. So it's going to read my regular link first and make it black. And then it goes, oh, it's not just a link though, it's a visited link, so it's going to overwrite that black and make it pink. Let's just say uh, you decided to put your hover first. So my hover is here, and let's refresh my page, and whoa, why is my hover not working? Well, what it's doing is it goes, okay, well, when something's hover, when I have a link that's being hovered on top of, I'm going to make it yellow, except, oh, that's also a link, and my links have to be black, or in this case, my visited, which has to be pink. So whatever the case is, these are coming after my hover. So they're overwriting it because both of these links are both, you know, it's a hover link and well, it's a link. And this one here is a link and it's a visited link. So it's doing hover and visited. Visited is second in my CSS, so visited wins. So it's just really important that this is the exact order you go in. The same thing with the active. If you do want an active, when I'm clicking down right now, Oh, whoops, let's refresh. When I'm clicking down right now, it's active, but I'm also hovering on top at the same time. My mouse is hovering on the link, it's on top of the link, and I'm clicking. So both of these two are, you know, they're both in play. So it's changing it to blue, but because I'm active, this one here, or because I'm also hovering, this one here is winning because it's second in my CSS. So it's really important that you put all four of these in this order if you're using them all. And if you're not using one, well, you can just you know leave it out and then it won't apply. Refresh and we can see 
my links are black. Um, you'll notice this has gone back to the default purple though because I don't have a, a visited color anymore. So I could have the A link and my A visited color black and that makes them all black. And the other option I have is just to put A here. So my links, um, I'm not worrying about the pseudo states of them. I'm just saying all my links are black except my hover is going to overwrite that and become yellow. Uh, so this doesn't worry about the pseudo states of them or the pseudo classes, it's just covering all my bases and then I can overwrite uh, any of the pseudo classes that I want um, with that. How can we make our links look a little nicer? A lot of people like getting rid of that uh, line on the bottom. So you can just come in and do a text decoration none and that will get rid of that line. So in the last video we looked, we have text decoration, we have uh, underline, overline or the strike through. And if you have one that you want to get rid of, like in this case, you can just do a text decoration none and it will get rid of uh, your underline. And that's something that a lot of people like to do. Important though, make sure your links do stand out. You don't want your links just to fade into your site. Um, you need to make sure that people can see them. So I like having hover states on them and I like making sure that the color or something about them stands out enough so people realize that they can probably click on them. I usually don't do a really big hover like that though. My hover will usually be something like, uh, I'm using black, so let's just do like a 555. Uh, 555 is like a little light gray. So there's a difference, but it's subtle. But it's enough that it, you know the, the user will see a little flash of color. They'll see that it's interactive. I see the little hand icon. There's enough things going on there that I'm aware that I can click on it. Whereas if I made this, fire brick and I made this fire brick. Um, if all my text looks exactly like that, there's no underlines, people won't know what they can click on. Uh, there's also a focus, which we might as well bring up since uh, for accessibility purposes. And I'm going to do color. Uh, let's just do yellow, actually, again, just to highlight the difference. And focus is uh, instead of hovering on top, some people will visit websites. Whoop, I never refreshed. Uh, by pushing the tab button on their keyboard. So you can cycle through your tabs. You might be going, well, not many people do that, but some people with accessibility problems might not be able to use a mouse or for various other reasons, uh, they're not going through like this. So the focus, you can give it its own little look there. And a lot of the time it will be the same as your hover. So a nice little trick and something I haven't looked at yet is to select or have multiple selectors have the same property. Uh, so I have my A hover, and I'm going to put a comma, and then do a focus. And they don't have to be on two lines. I could write it like that if I wanted to. But uh, I just find it easier to, if you have like four or five in a row sometimes. Uh, so the comma separates them. I can't use a space. The space is something completely different we haven't got to yet. But I can use a comma to separate them. And now both my hover is that light gray. And when I tab through and I use my focus state, that's also going to be the same light gray. So that's it for this video. Just a quick look at uh, styling our links and the different things we can do with our links. I hope you liked it. I'm getting pretty excited because we're getting closer and closer to the end of this series. It is getting, we're starting to wind down. As usual, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button. If you did like the video, push the little like button and leave a comment below to let me know you liked the video. I won't know you, you if you liked it if you don't let me know you liked it. And until the next video, have yourselves an awesome day.